we go. Three, two. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing a series on the Resurrection Church and it is very simple. We're looking at how the resurrection of Jesus can and should totally change our understanding of what we think about church. Some people think church is a building. Some people think church is a group of people. Some people, even people who go to church, thinks that church is about humans doing human things. We sing, we speak, we pray, we even confess our sins. But the resurrection tells us that church is more than all of those things. The resurrection shows us that church is God's thing and that God will lead it, nurture it, grow it, and it will flourish forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Nothing can stop the church, nothing. 300 years ago, Nathan, what do you think the biggest company in the world was? Um, KFC. Uh, K KFC. <laughs> it wasn't KFC, it was the East India Trading Company. It was massive. You know Amazon, the website where many of us buy many of our things. That covers at the moment globally 14% of all online trade. Now the East India Trading Company covered 50% of all trade worldwide, not just online retail, but all trade. And so it was at least 10 times bigger than Amazon is today. What? Unbelievable. <laughs> Guess what happened 150 years later? Um. It was gone. Now in this last year, we've seen lots of seemingly powerful things fall apart. But the church could never do that because the church is not an institution based on human power. It's based on God's resurrection power. Hear this verse, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It is Jesus, res it is Jesus resurrection power, not human power that keeps the church going. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will never beat it. And so you need to know it is not on human power, but on Jesus's power that the church is built. Now we've got a little illustration of what this means. Now, if Nathan was standing there and Tom and Mike had come along and they decide they want to throw Nathan down, they can do it because they are more powerful than Nathan. In this situation, Nathan now has massive extra help to help him get back up. The elastic power of the trampoline beneath him springs him back up again when he's thrown down. The elastic power is like the power of the resurrection. When Jesus was thrown down on the cross, the power of God sprung him back up. And now Jesus guarantees that same power to the church. Whenever we're thrown down, God's power can spring us back up. So it illustrates, the, the trampoline boing illustrates the power of the resurrection. God's power, doesn't it? It catches you and pushes you back up. It does. <laughs> Jesus, the one who was resurrected, now lies beneath, above and in the church. And the force he carries in his body makes it impossible, possible for the church to be thrown down. So apparently in 1949, China made the Church of Jesus illegal. There were 800,000 Protestant Christians in China at the time. But for the last 70 years, the Protestant Church has continued to be opposed. But now there are somewhere between, this is unbelievable, 100 million and 200 million Protestant Christians. They were thrown down and the power of Jesus popped them back up again. It's amazing. And in 1979, at the time of the Islamic Revolution, there were 500 known Christians in Iran. The government very strongly opposed Muslims converting to Christianity. And most recent estimates are that the Church of Jesus in Iran is one million. Incredible. Amazing. Not on their power, but on the resurrection, resurrection power, power of Jesus catching them. 
and popping them back up. I want to tell you about my friend Ilya, who many of us know. He grew up as an evangel in an evangelical church in Bulgaria at a time when communism outlawed evangelical faith. They were seeking to destroy faith in Jesus. They were trying to throw down the body of Jesus. Many of his friends and his family were arrested. Some of them were killed. He doesn't like to talk about it, and who can blame him? I mean, who would want to talk about an experience like that? But when they were thrown down, did they stay down? In 2020, in lockdown, just as it was about to hit, uh, and all the travel restrictions were just about to come in, Ilya went to Bulgaria, and there he began five new churches in the northwestern province, which is the heartlands of where communism was. And those churches are thriving and doing well. Let's hear what he says about why a church could come in an ex-communist country and why it can do well. Hello, my friends. Happy Easter Day. Jesus is risen. The people in the Bulgarian vineyard, they are happier than the other vineyards because we have twice Easter. One with the churches in the Great Britain and other one with the national holiday in Bulgaria. This is on the 2nd of May. But I think because Jesus is here and now, because the, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit is here because you and me, we are here. That Jesus is here because you are here. And the power of the Holy Spirit is here today. My friends, Jesus is risen for you and for me. So in this time, when so much has fallen down, to know that Jesus, his power, his resurrection power stands behind the church, doesn't it just make you feel like, oh, the safety, the safety yeah. in the church of Jesus because he holds us with his power. And I wonder if some of you watching this would like to be part of a people that is as safe and as secure as that. I wonder if you would like for yourself to know that God is below you and above you and his power, his power will hold you and even when you're knocked down, he will cause you to come back up. So we are praying that today, several people watching this service will decide, yes, I want to be part of this thing. I need that force of the resurrection in my life to push me back up. And we're wondering, is that you? We're praying that it is. We're praying that it is. And just to showcase this a bit more, we've got a range of very ordinary and very wonderful people from our church who are just going to share with you how the power of the resurrection has made very tangible differences in their lives. Good morning, church. Today I'm going to share a testimony with you how God opened the eyes of my parents to show how powerful and kind God really is. One day when we went to Window Wonderland in Hyde Park, it was a very crowded place with over thousands of people there. I was about three and my parents took me on a ride which I love. So a couple of minutes after we got off, I realised how much I loved that ride. So, while my parents were talking to my friends, the little cheeky me snuck off. Without turning their backs for one second, they had realised that I had gone. They were worried sick. They kept on looking for me for a long time and they had to call the police over and the police shut all the gates of the carnival as they were worried someone has taken me, but that's what they thought. While this all happened, I was relaxing on a ride, chilling out. 
My parents prayed to God so hard that he would help me find them. And then my dad's friend found me on a ride as I waved to him. My parents learned one thing, actually two things. That day, number one, we will never let go of Chiniru ever again. And number two, how powerful and God really is. So many things could have gone wrong with me. A three-year-old walking around in winter wonderland with thousands of people there on my own like that. Imagine what things could have happened to me. It could have been taken hours and hours for my parents to find me again. But God is powerful and he loves us. And that's why he found me, to use my family. And this is a verse which I love. This is a verse that is in Isaiah 41 to 10. So do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you in your righteous hand. I would like to finish it with a good, happy Easter, everybody. Um, Tom's just asked me to say a couple of words about where I felt God um, being close to me uh, during the, the last few months. And if, if I'm honest, I, um, it took me a while to think about um, because like I imagine many of us, I felt God near and I felt him very far um, over the past few months. Um, like I imagine many of us have, have struggled and, and the last three months I found particularly difficult um, compared to the nine before that. Um, just where my sort of mental capacity to deal with the pandemic has has, has gone and um, sort of the stresses and strains of work hasn't changed yet everything else around me has and um, you know all of our leisure and social time was stripped away and, and yeah it's very difficult but you know where have I felt God most alive and if, for me it's it's when I've, I've made a decision to push into him um, everything's changed around you and it's hard to feel helpless and a bit lost and a bit sort of set, set adrift but the, the promises of God never change and that's something that God regularly shows me sort of pre-pandemic and now you know with everything, with everything going on in the world you know does God still love me does um you know does does he will he never fail me um you know will he never forsake me yes he will never do those things and he will still love me always um he tells me not to be afraid, not to be anxious about anything. Has that changed? No, no, still, do not be afraid. Give it all to God, cast it sort of at the foot of the cross. Is the word still a lamp unto my feet? Yes, I have to read it for it to be a lamp unto my feet and it's something I'm working on doing more of, but yes, it is. Um, but yeah, so for me, like the peace, joy, clarity and understanding around what's going on, like it comes when I've just included him. And sometimes that can be really pressing in, trying to read the word, trying to pray. Uh, other times it can be just literally giving him 30 seconds, um, you know, uh, as I'm at my desk. That's at my desk, my, my kitchen, my uh, dining room table, um, trying to work. Um, just giving him the day and saying, Lord, I just need you in this day. Please just be there. And so all the promises of God, and, and there's, there's, yeah, there's hundreds, but they stay the same. God never changes. When the whole world changes, it's suddenly how big he is becomes, becomes a reality. And then how all this stuff going on and he remains the same and he can still be trusted and he's still he's he is still god and um so yeah so the final thing i just leave with is a verse verse from isaiah 54 verse 10 um it says though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken nor my covenant of peace removed god is the same yesterday today and tomorrow and um we can trust in that Happy Easter, everyone. I thought it would be nice to share um, an encouraging message about myself and what, what God has done in my life since I found out about his love, him dying for my sins, since he's filled me with his presence. Um, there's been a lot of changes, like just reflecting, there's been a lot of changes in my life. For example, um, before I used to, to love money <laughs> to the point where when I was in secondary school, I fell out with, with someone I was close with over a pound. And that's, that's how much I used to love money. I used to make money. I was a bit of a wheeler and dealer. Um, I used to save a lot of money um, to the point where um, when I left school, I could buy a car. That's how much money I used to, uh, I, I made when I was in school. Um, but I never used to give money. And when I found out about the love and the generosity of Jesus, it, it melted my heart to the point where I wanted to give away money. I wanted to, to 
do things for people where if I saw and if I see a homeless person on the street I want to actually buy them something um, if my friends in need I see that oh like I could bless them with that like God compels me to do these things and it's because of the love and the generosity that Jesus has shown to me um, and continues to show to me continues to show, show, shows to us day by day um, and it's just it's, yeah, it's, it's radically transformed my mind ways before, and this is still an ongoing process, before, a lot of things that were bad, I used to call them good. And a lot of things that were good, I used to call them bad. Um, like marriage, I said to myself, I'm never getting married. <laughs> and this year I've been married eight years. So it's, it's a lot of things that, that God has transformed in my life. And it's through me seeking him, through me reading his word, it's through me getting advice, being humble and listening to people. Um, and not only listening to them, but going back to God and saying, God, is this what you're saying? Um, and getting confirmation through his word, through seeking him in prayer um, and, um, and waiting on God at times and not just rushing to do things in haste. Um, so yeah, God has radically transformed and is continuing to transform my life because of the love and the generosity that he shows to me. My name's Emily and I'm part of the youth group at Croydon Vineyard. The first time I really met God was at the first Soul Survivor I ever went to, um, Soul Survivor 2018. And I'd been really struggling with my faith. I didn't really know who God was personally to me. Um, I sort of learned about a God in the very textbook way. And that's not a criticism of the education that I'd had in Sunday school or anything previous, but it was just, I just didn't know who God was. And I was really struggling a lot at school, so I was in year 10 at the time. And I remember finding exams really difficult and really, really horrible to do. And I was really worried and anxious about them a lot. Um, and I cried a lot in front of my teachers. And I just, it really wasn't working out for me. Um, and then a lot of stuff was happening in my friendship groups at the time at school. And it was, everything was just really, really messy. Um, and so meeting God was a huge surprise <laughs> I mean obviously you know you hear so much that oh God loves you and if you've been brought up in the church it's something you hear a lot and it's like the bread and butter of your existence God loves you but I think that was the first time I really seriously realized oh my goodness God does actually love me and it was it was crazy it's incredible and I think one of the barriers between me and realizing that had been for a really long time that I I just really struggled and had a lot of self-doubt when it came to God and whether it was I was hearing his voice or I was hearing what I wanted to be his voice or if I was making things up. Um, <laughs> I'm really quite imaginative. Um, and so people who know me know I like really enjoy writing and reading and so storytelling is just really attractive to me. And I was really worried that I was making this up for myself and that it wasn't real. Um, and so I asked God... I thought, well, if I ask God to make me happy, it could just be me making me happy. Um, and my logic behind it was, is I wouldn't want to make myself sad. And so that's what I asked God to do. And I said, God, can you break my heart? Because I knew that only he would do it. And oh my goodness, you know, I wouldn't recommend asking for that. But it was like, I saw just so many incredible things I think you know the only way I can really describe it it was like vision after vision of it started off with just like the landscape the environment the mountains the oceans the forests um I had some incredible incredible visions but it was just that sense of being known and then going back to school the next year just everything felt so simplified and easy and exams were still difficult for me and they still are difficult for me in many ways but it's that sense of knowing that God is behind me, with me, and he is before me. And so I feel that sense of security and love from God, which is just invaluable. Good morning, everyone. I'm Catherine. I come to Croydon Vineyard. I just want to give a short testimony that um, I concerned in my wrist last week, Thursday. I was supposed to join the pod and I wasn't able to because I had to do something for a friend. So I text Leslie and said, Leslie, I won't be able to join the pod. 
but please pray for me. I have a painful right wrist, which has been on for a week now. So um, let's just text back and say, okay. And then on Thursday, I went to bed and woke up on Friday morning. My wrist is pain-free up to today. I just want to thank God. I give God the glory for answering prayer. And I thank God for all the people around me that pray for me. And as God has answered to my prayer, I believe every one of you, God will answer to your prayer. To God be the glory. So I love those stories. Yeah. And you, love those people. You could have one of those stories. Yeah. Not because of your strength or your skill, not because you've got enough. None of us have got enough. But Jesus, his resurrection shows he has the power, no matter how low, how lost, how broken, how opposed, how damaged you can be, he can come with his resurrection power and lift you up. And if you want to do that right now, we're going to pray a really simple prayer that maybe you want to pray yourself as well. And if you just repeat this in your heart and at the end say amen, and we would love you to let us know if you've prayed that prayer for the first time or if it's been a significant repeat for you of praying that prayer. So let's pray. Jesus, we recognize that many things we thought were strong have shown themselves not to be strong. We recognize parts of ourselves we thought were strong have not been strong enough. And Jesus, we ask you, would you now please bring your power and your strength to meet us and to lift us up? And you can just repeat after me, Jesus, I give my life into your hands. Please forgive me, please meet me, please help me. I invite your power to come and make me part of your people so you can lift me up and I can be with you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Oh man, and you if you prayed that prayer, to receive the resurrection of power of Jesus Christ right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive it right now. And you can never be too young or too old to, to pray that prayer. I'm glad you pointed young at me when you said that. No, you can, you can never. You might be a tiny little kid watching this or a, a really old age pensioner watching this. And you're never too young or too old. <laughs> we pray that you know in this time, this Easter of all Easter's, the resurrection power that Jesus brings his power into your life.